Okay guys, this is part two. This is Brother Day. And we all are in Christ and we're all sitting here because we want to learn something today. So please, as I said, stay tuned. Do not move. And please, this has a purpose. But the Lord wants me to start slow. He doesn't want me to rush through this. And He wants it to be done right. But this is the encouragement part. And I'm doing this for a reason. Friends, when I first met the Lord, it seemed like so many things came up against me, I couldn't keep track. Friends, have any of you ever been physically attacked by things you can't understand? Have any of you ever been? And you can't understand it, scared you so bad that you didn't want to go on anymore. Have any of you ever Heard things maybe you can't understand or you can't explain. Well, Brother Paul told us about this. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, my friends. And more than any other time in history, you already know this. How many paranoia individuals are out there? who think something's happening. They're not paranoid. How many paranormal shows do you see on TV today? How many Ghostbusters? How many people do you see that claim to be mediums and talk to spirits? How many do you see that claim to be ET? And some of you say, well, Maybe there is something out there. No, there isn't. How many ghost shows have you ever watched? And they have real photo photography to back it up. And voices on recordings. And in your heart, you know it's true. My friends, they're not what you think they are. They're just pretending to be. For friends, those are wicked spirits of the air that Paul warned about. We do not wrestle against things we can see. But we are wrestling against things, especially in this day and age, that we cannot see. And they are wickedness. And they're in the air. And they're very real. And they have no greater desire than to destroy every single Christian that's on this planet, as you know. Plans are underway. And if you've seen any of the tapes during the FEMA camps and all these other things, you understand this and there's so much material on TV. I urge you to check it out. When I, began, when I became a Christian, my two biggest fears were, were to first ever say anything amiss against the Holy Ghost. That was my greatest fear. I didn't want to hurt Christ. Ever. Second, I was always dealing with desires of the flesh. Do you know how much pain I went through? Every time I turned around, it seemed like for some reason there was some kind of thought popping into my head and I didn't put it there, at least I didn't think I did. And at the point I thought I was the one that was the one that was doing all the wrong. It hurt me so bad that I told the Lord one day in prayer, I didn't want to hurt him no more. Did you ever go through any of that, friends? Have you ever had a situation like that after you met the Lord? That for some reason, either things you couldn't see were coming up against you. You might have been woken up by what you thought was a voice saying your name. And you knew because of the chills up your back it wasn't pleasant. You may have knew you had a calling on your life, but then the very things that tempted your flesh all of a sudden were battling against it with those self-same temptations and fears. And you just couldn't understand it. Do not think that I have not known your pain or your sorrows because my heart's with you now. I know what that's like. I'm speaking of experience. But I want to encourage you, my friends, 
because this message you're about to hear is going to change your life. And God's going to fill you as full as he can possibly. And then he's going to ordain you. He's going to give you that deposit you've been hungering for and you thought something's missing. What is it? And when you receive that deposit, know from whence it came, because the peace of God which surpasses all understanding and the secret of the prophets and the unspeakable gift mentioned by Paul is going to fill your heart. My friends, then you are known and you've already been known, but there's something you were meant to hear. And I'm nothing more than one of your servants, just like you, gone through the same things. And I believe that we all go through things, and there's no better person that can preach to you the greatness and mercies of God than those that have received it in their life. So I urge you to please pay attention. This is probably something that you'll never forget, and you're going to tell others. Refer them to videos like this. There might be others out there. Refer them to it. Tell your pastors about it. The very things that you're hearing, being tempted with, sidetracking you. Even the material things that in your life is right now. And you're out there trying to buy a car. You need to get this house. You're after the lotto. It will tempt you with everything you have a weakness with and then some. Somebody might come up to your door and fancy you. Don't do it. I'm telling you, don't do it. Rely on the Lord. And I mean really draw close to Him. If you make mistakes... God's grace is not an excuse, but the forgiveness is there. But let me warn you, if a man is overcome and he goes to abide in Egypt, in Egypt he will die. So you lay hold on what's before you. That prize is Christ himself. Don't go to the left. Don't go to the right. And remember those desolations you had there behind you? Don't look back. If you have to, duct tape those hands to that plow that is before you and start planting the seeds that God already put in your heart. You know you need to go out and preach. This is the days of Joel. And every one of you that knew that book just got an unction over your head. That's meant for you. It's time to go. The fields are ripe. They're ready for harvest. Yeah, you're going to run into tares. But there's far more wheat out there than you think. This is the last hour of the day. This is the day that the Lord says to those that have come in the last hour looking for work. He's, and he says, why are you standing here? No man will hire us. The Lord says, go into the fields and whatever they're going to get, you're going to get too. And he hired them for the penny a day. Remember that? When the labor was all over with, when those ripe fields were picked, the ones that labored all day long, and we're talking the former prophets, the former martyrs, the ones that really laid the groundwork. How worthy are they? But when they came out, they said, Lord, we bore the heat of the day. We were out there all day. We started early in the morning. How come you're giving these who have only been out there for one hour the same thing as you're giving us? The Lord says, friend, did I not agree with you to give you a penny for the day? Isn't it lawful for me to give what I would want to give to whom I give it to, just like you? Is your eye evil because mine is good, saith the Lord? So therefore, you are in the last hour. The Lord is calling you. Look around you. 
see the violence, see the things coming upon the earth, and know for certain that you've been called. You have been called. Lay aside the car, put away the things of this earth. Technology is about to change. Things you thought had a meaning are nothing at all. The very things on this earth are now going to be dead to you once you receive the message of grace and you know it fully in your heart. My friends, it took two 15 minute tapes just to get you ready for a journey you probably will not forget. It is going to be a slow journey because I promised the Lord I've got to be careful with this. I've got to take my time. I cannot do it rush. It's got to be slow. And I ask your forgiveness ahead of time. I'm not a smart person, but I did receive a message. Some of us are called to be pastors. Some are called evangelists. Some are called to be healers. Some have the gifts of government. And whatever God has given you, you need to listen to this so that signs and wonders will follow those that believe. Please, this is for the good of the church. And yes, the church is going to go through the tribulation period. We're going to get to that too. But those that endure, a crown of life will be given by him himself. And those that endure will understand why they were chosen. Now listen, the grace of God has been songs, there's been books, there's been countless sermons on it. But have you ever noticed that nobody ever actually gave you the definition of it? Nobody really knows what it is, and neither did I. Until one day I asked, and what the Lord say, ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it will be open to you. The Lord says, if you ask for the Holy Spirit, it will be given. But ask in faith, don't doubt. I like to try to give you a little bit of a preview of what we're going to go through. And I hope this may explain a few things of what we are going to go through. This is called Grace, Excuse, or Remedy. This is not just another sermon. This has meaning. The teaching is aimed at bringing to light the truth concerning the following. The grace of God, being justified in all things, having liberty in Christ, and most importantly, something that we seem to call backsliding, which in my memory, I could be wrong, but in my memory I only saw that term once in Scripture. This teaching will also address the commandments and what they should mean to born-again Christians. And finally, what about 1 John 1, 8 through 10? We're going to talk about that. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is so precious that we've forgotten the power of it. The Spirit was, on the, was the self-same that protected the children of Israel from being overtaken in the desert of Sinai from the Egyptian army. On Pharaoh's orders, they would have either trampled them under the hole or under the wheels of the oncoming army or would have, in all likelihood, brought them back in Egypt in chains. It was by the unspeakable gift of God that Egyptians, that the Egyptians army was not allowed to carry out that threat. It was the Spirit of God that blocked the way of the Egyptians by way of a pillar of fire. Friends, at this particular junction, I have to stop again because we're on 15 minute loops and I will continue in number three. I do ask your patience while we're going through this in Jesus' name. Amen.